Uh, let's bring in T.J. Rogers uh, to do that. He's the founder and former CEO at Cypress Semiconductor. T.J., always good to have you. You know, this idea of a talent drain at Intel uh, and whether you can sort of um, regain some of the luster that they uh, had in, uh, previously. I mean, you have good insight into that. Is that something that you believe has occurred and is it possible to reverse it? Uh, yes, it's possible to reverse it. Uh, you always have, Intel has an incredible platform to move forward from. <clears throat> but I can tell you in Silicon Valley, I came here in 1970. Intel was exactly two years old. Uh, the very first year uh, working at Stanford in my PhD in integrated electronics, I met Noyce and Moore, and they began a recruiting process. And I can tell you once, I never thought about money, uh, what my paycheck would be. I knew it would be fair and reasonable. Uh, I wanted to know what I was going to work on that was going to change the world. And now we've got a CEO there talking about which parts he's going to chop off and sell. And we've got, you know, the buzzards flying around uh, talking about, you know, strategic options and stuff like that. Not OK. Something's got to change. Well, what needs to change? Well, they need a new CEO. The CEO needs to be technical. If you look at advanced micro devices, for example, uh, they've caught up tremendously on, on Intel in Intel's area, and their CEO is a PhD and also a good CEO. So you, you've got to get somebody that's respected by the technical community for sure. They certainly have enough money. Second point is I'm, I, I'm a process guy. I'm a device guy. I, I work my entire career in Moore's Law. So I have zero sympathy for the whiners at Intel who sit there and say for three and a half years now, gee, we can't make seven nanometers. Samsung can, TSMC can, but we can't because of blah, blah. That house needs to get cleaned. There's plenty of talent here in Silicon Valley, and we need to have it scheduled, and, and jobs need to ride on it. So just to be clear, TJ, do you think that a smaller semiconductor company could be a more powerful one and, and would solve some of those issues? That's the reason I ask is because Loeb is pushing for the divestitures and, and, and potentially spinning off some recent acquisitions. Uh, but he notes that Intel is losing out to competitors. He notes that customers are building chips in-house. The talent uh, wars and the talent that, are, that is fleeing, as, as David mentioned earlier. Uh, and then, of course, that Intel is a, of imperative importance for national security. So would a smaller, more focused company solve that problem as it would, you know, in, in other areas that Loeb has targeted, such as Campbell's Soup? Well, first of all, uh, Loeb's doing his job. He's bringing attention to an area that needs attention. And by the way, uh, the stake he bought before he made his announcement is already made him 50, uh, 50 million paper dollars. So let, let's not talk about Loeb as the great strategist in semiconductors. Uh, also, you use two words, slim down and, sm uh, and focus. Those are different. Uh, you know, slim down, sure, every company gets fat and bureaucratic, but by the time they get slimmed down, go through all these strategic initiatives, bring in the bankers, do all that hoopla that really doesn't matter, the, the franchise may be gone. What they need to do is make the best CPUs and servers in the world this year, right now, in volume. And that's what they need to focus on. And I keep hearing out of them about their carbon footprint and the diversity uh, issues and stuff like that. And they, they have chosen not to focus on their business. And now their CEO is speaking the equivalently if the Boeing guy said, the Boeing CEO said, well, I'm not sure we want to be in airplanes anymore. Uh, or, or, you know, or this GM guy said, a uh, girl, uh, Vera said, uh, okay, GM, I'm not sure we, we need to be in cars. Uh, we have to have somebody who's fanatically dedicated to that. It's a tough business, fanatically dedicated to it. Go back to Andy Grove. He was the, the most important of the Noyce Moore Grove to Rambert that ran it. He was not a nice guy. He was very tough. I always admired the toughness and discipline of Intel and their focus. Their stuff came out on time like a clock, and they ran everybody else into the ground. Now we have press releases where we have New York, uh, New York uh, private equity people speculating on what Intel's strategy ought to be. Intel shouldn't tolerate that, and if they do, that's a sign they need to change. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.